Is anyone who's visited Wrigley Field or the area around it knows how much it's changed. So we're going to try and get a look from the air. So let's show you the before photo of uh, the neighborhood. And this is, uh, it's sometimes it's hard to pinpoint dates. This isn't too far back, but you can see there, if we look at Wrigley Field in this photo, the one thing that stick, sticks out is there's no lights on top of the ballpark. So that we know the first game ever with lights at Wrigley Field was August 8th, 1988. We know it's before then, and it's hard for you guys to see on the screen, but we kind of zoomed in on some of these cars and buses, and we're pretty confident that this photo is probably from the late 70s to early 80s. You obviously notice uh, you don't have any giant jumbotrons or anything like that. It's the ballpark looking as classic as it did uh, throughout the late 70s and the early 80s. Now let's start this slow wipe and as we transition between the two photos uh, we're taking a look at the drone cam our live camera before we go as we go between the old photo and the new photo a couple key differences first of all you can see those lights emerging those were installed throughout 1988 towards the end of 88 is when they started those jumbotrons obviously weren't there until the last couple years but even look at the surrounding neighborhood surprisingly a lot of those high rises do remain the same you can see that one just right in the middle that one is still there the same a lot of the buildings that our high rises along uh, Lakeshore Drive still look pretty similar. But look at the immediate neighborhood on the lower left hand side. That's uh, the Hotel Zachary. You can see along the left hand side of the ballpark too, where cars are parked in the old shot. Now we have the park at Wrigley or Gallagher Way as it's been renamed. Cars used to park there right next to Wrigley Field through the 70s and 80s. And uh, in a little bit, I'll actually be showing you an even older photo a little later in the show, showing even before then what used to be there. And as we look at the right, you can still see a billboard there. It's center just to south of the marquee that's above the old the, the cubby bear which is still there right now and as we go to the right you can even see the new development addison clark new luxury condos i think the pool you can even see on the lower right hand side just barely making it into the screen is there those uh, go for about forty four hundred dollars a month if you want a two bedroom two bath in the wrigley field neighborhood now, of course the neighborhood changed considerably from the 60s and 70s but it's just really cool to look at that well and look obviously a lot has changed in the neighborhood neighborhoods change and you can see a lot of new developments but a lot of Wrigley's charm remains the same even though the bleachers have been expanded a couple times and I mentioned those jumbotrons uh, a lot of the charm of the ballpark. So what we're going to start with today is Lincoln Park of course the park was a designated a park long long ago and Lincoln Park stretches all the way far north north of Belmont technically and then the zoo as we know it is more north North Avenue and Fullerton but this photo that we're looking at we actually don't have a date this is from the historical society but we know it's in the 20s and you can see the north pond of Lincoln Park to your left you can see what is now Cannon Drive used to be Lakeshore Drive at that point you can even see part of the beach on the right hand side none of that is like it is today some things have changed if we could slowly wipe to our drone and this is the first time we're trying this so bear with us you can see that the pond reveals itself the pond is in the exact same place as it was before and as we continue to move to the right the Peggy Notabart Nature Museum has changed over time it's a lot bigger building, but the pier on the left-hand side, you can even see, is in a similar spot. And as we continue to move over to the right-hand side, a good point of reference for you is if you look down on the, I'd say the right third of your screen, you can kind of see a little domed building. This is right at Sheridan and a little bit south of Diversity. This is the National Elk Museum, and this is going to help us date this photo because the Elk Museum was built in the mid-20s, about 1924 to 1926. So we know that the photo was taken sometime after that, and again, as we kind of look back and forth, maybe back at the older picture again, if you look off to the right-hand side, you can see the shores of Lake Michigan. Now what you have is Diversity Harbor between that spot and Lake Michigan, kind of blocking it, protecting it, where a lot of boats park throughout the summer months. That was built in the late 20s, about 28 or so. So if we do a little bit of math, I think this photo was taken in 1927. What's remarkable is there's still a few buildings. It's hard to see a little red brick building. If you look on the drone or on the old shot as we go back and forth you can see there's a little red brick building that's now being dwarfed by some of the sky rises that is still there from the time and a few of the other apartment buildings or complexes that used to be hotels here in Lincoln Park still exist but man oh man what a cool way to look at our city and just to see those changes over almost a hundred years obviously we're approaching a hundred years let's take a look at another photo this one's pretty high in the air probably taken from an airplane sometime in the 20s or the 30s we think so we're taking a look 
at this photo, we can see a few things to point out what we're looking at. We see the Hilton Hotel that's on the left hand side of the screen. You can see Buckingham Fountain that's on the lower right hand side. I can see the Art Institute too. So let's start to sweep and reveal the drone and still looks what uh, what see what looks the same today. You can see that Hilton. So that's built in 1927. That's on the left hand side. As we continue to move towards the middle and a little bit over, you can see one building right along Michigan Avenue. It's pretty bright right now, but it has a little cone and a bulbous top up at the top. That is the Metropolitan Building built in 1924. You can see the Art Institute there. Man, a lot of these buildings along Michigan Avenue are the same as they were back when this photo was taken. So when was the photo taken? We don't have a total guess exactly when, but my best estimate that this is right around 1933, the photo to now. 1933 was when the World's Fair was. They took a lot of aerial photos and we'll have more on what that World's Fair was all about in just a little bit. But either way, whether you're looking at the old photo or whether you're looking at this gorgeous drone footage, it's just looking beautiful here this morning. Let's go ahead and take a look at the old school photo. So just for a reference point, you can see the, uh, the Field Museum in the lower part of the photo, the Shedd Aquarium there as well, and the beginnings of Soldier Field there off in the uh, just above where the Field Museum is. This is all part of the 1933 World's World's Fair. So take a look at the left. That's Northerly Island, which was completely redone for the fair. Again, this was 1933 to 1934. So let's go ahead and start to reveal some of the differences. So as you move from left to right, just off to the left, and keep in mind, folks, we're getting this as close as we can. This shot was taken from an airplane much higher than where our drone can be. But as we move to the left, you, or to the right, excuse me, you can see the Shedd Aquarium is there. That was 1930, still there. And we can see the Field Museum pretty much looking exactly as it did today. The configuration of Lakeshore Drive completely different back then. Of course, it wasn't yet designed for increased passenger travel back and forth on the vehicles. They obviously had cars back then, but not as many as they have today. And you can see Soldier Field completely renovated from where it was. Used to be much larger, much more people could fit inside of there before their renovations in uh, 2003. But you see a little bridge. Notice Northern Island at the bottom, or I guess the southern part of it, the furthest part away from it, is not connected to the mainland where we are right now, but it was back in 1933. They connected the World's Fair to the main parts of Chicago through uh, some a new contraption they call the Transporter Bridge, a little pulley system that brought folks back and forth to see the World's Fair. Now, not a, not it doesn't get as much hay as the 1893 uh, Columbia Exposition, but the World's Fair, which ran from 1933 to 1934 in Chicago is the reason why we have the fourth star. So we have four stars on the Chicago flag. The World's Fair of 1933 represents that fourth star. Just a really cool look. And what you can't even see on that is the planetarium that was built in that shot, but it's just off to the left-hand side. So that is, that'll do it for Professor Hansen here 